All right, so this one we're going to make a new sketch. And we're going to make it on the same plane we made the first one. But this one we're going to center on the origin. And all that work we just did to make a rectangle or a square really isn't necessary. It was just to show you how constraints and dimensions and changing parameters can work. Here we're going to draw a rectangle at, at the origin. So we're going to choose center rectangle and snap our cursor to the origin. Then we'll start moving it out. Instead of just picking based on where the cursor is, I'm going to type in 10 centimeters or 10 tab and then 10 again and hit return. And now we have a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter rectangle. You can see the dimensions are placed. You can see constraints are placed automatically by using the rectangle tool. Now I'm going to finish that sketch. And now what we're going to look at over here over on our browser we can see we have two different sketches. One is called sketch three. And when I hover over it, you can see it's that initial rectangle we made. The other one is called sketch four. And with the eye icon, I can turn them on or off. And at this point, I'm going to turn off the first rectangle because we're not going to use it. So what we're going to do now is extrude the rectangle that we just created. Click on the extrude toolbar shortcut. Could also click under create extrude or could have just hit the keyboard E. So I'm going to hit the keyboard E to show that, and it comes up with the same dialog box. The profile selected is the rectangle. Rotate so we can see a little bit of it. And we're going to want to move it, in this case, make it five centimeters tall. So I'm just going to type in five centimeters and hit return. Now I have mine set so it's showing a wireframe Let's go down to display settings on visual style and say shaded with visible edges only. You could also go to shaded with hidden edges. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, put some fillets and chamfers on different faces, just so you can see what those are. In order to do that, we're gonna come to the modify menu and choose fill it, which you could see we could have activated just with the letter F. And the first thing we're going to do is select where we want the fillet to be. And I'm just going to select this entire face. And then if I were to drag, you could kind of see what the fillet is. It puts a rounded edge, like a router would, a router bit would if you were doing woodwork. Let's set that to 0.25 centimeters. And you can see it's got a nice rounded edge all the way around. We can do a very similar thing on the bottom, which is to put a chamfer. In this case, it's the same workflow. We're going to take the bottom edge and we can push in or not. A chamfer is like a beveled edge. And in this case, we're also going to put it at 0.25 centimeters. Hit the home for the orientation. Just want to show you, we currently have our four sides don't have a fillet. We totally could have put a fillet or a chamfer in the exact same way. But to show you a different way that you can enter fillets, let's actually go back to our original sketch on our timeline, which is called sketch four for this rectangle. If we say edit sketch, we can also put in fillets and chamfers on our sketch. So let's select fillet. And in this case, we're gonna just keep clicking two lines at a time. And you're gonna see the fillet being put all the way around. And the fillet right now says it's 2.5 centimeters. You can see as we get it bigger, it starts having some, some problems. It gets too big. And we're going to make it the same as the others, which is 0.25 centimeters. And so you can see a nice little rounded edge. And now we'll say finish sketch. As you look now, you can see that the fillet has been added to the extruded uh, shape 
that we made earlier because we did this earlier in the timeline. All right, now we're going to put some holes through this solid model that we've created. And we're going to do so by creating sketches of circles and then having them cut through the depth of this solid model. So we're going to start a sketch and we're going to do it on the surface, the top surface of this uh, solid model that we have. And there's lots of ways that you could think about placing the circle, but I'm going to start just by doing what we've been doing, which is placing it at the origin. And I'm going to make it two centimeters in diameter. So there's our circle. And we're going to try to move this circle actually to another location. So we're going to have circles around the perimeter here. And so you might think you could start with it here and then you could go modify move. We've already got our circle selected and we could pull it this way and say, okay, but the circle isn't going anywhere right now. And that's because when you center things on the origin, it's going to put a constraint there <clears throat> that the center, the circle is always centered on the origin. So if we click on the center and we kind of, now we've clicked on this constraint right here, I can delete that constraint. And now when I go back and I say modify move, and I already have the circle selected. Let's move it over this way by three centimeters. Now it's gonna move because we've unlocked that constraint that was holding it at or right above the origin where it was being centered. Now what we're gonna do is make a pattern, uh, a circular pattern for these different circles. So create, we're still in our sketch, circular pattern. We are gonna select our object and our center point can be the origin. We can look around, make sure this is doing what we think it's doing. Yep, it's all keeping on that plane. And let's go ahead and add more until we get up to where it's pretty full. In this case, we'll do eight circles. and say, okay. And then we can finish that sketch. Now I'm gonna extrude all of these. And when we select, I'm gonna select all eight of these circles. And then in terms of the cut, it's gonna be a distance or I could say all and then it's gonna go straight through to the other side. You could also just put in a distance that is necessarily bigger than that. But right now I'm saying go all the way through it. You can see it's red, so it's cutting. I'm gonna say okay. And now we've got eight holes going through our model. So we might be curious now, what happens if we edit our circular pattern so that we are only not having eight or having fewer. So let's go back to that sketch and say, edit the sketch. And I'm gonna click on this icon in the center. That's our circular pattern. Say, edit the circular pattern. Let's move it down to five. Say, okay, and finish. Great, look at that. We have five holes all extruded and the whole model updated. Uh, let's say later we determined we actually wanted to have six. Okay, let's go back and edit that sketch again. Select on the circular pattern icon right here and say edit circular pattern and say actually we wanted six of those. Okay, that sounds good. Finish the sketch. Oh no, that's not good. It only has five of them with holes and the sixth one that we just added doesn't get extruded because it wasn't extruded initially. So that's not good. So how can we fix that? 
what we really want is something that we can choose the number of holes in our pattern. And whenever we change it, it's going to actually change the number of holes we have in our solid model. And right now we're seeing that if we start adding to our circular pattern in the sketch, it's not going to also extrude those new circles and make the holes. It's just going to have a circle on the surface in the sketch, but nothing really in the solid model. So let's go back to the sketch and do this a different way that's going to give us that feature we want. That as we change the number in the pattern, that it's always going to change actually the number of holes we have in the solid model. So I'm first going to click on our circular pattern, and I'm going to delete that. So now these are no longer patterns. <laughs> so I've got to actually select the circles themselves. There we go. That's the goal. <laughs> and I'll finish the sketch. So we have our one hole through. So what we're going to do now is instead of making the circular pattern in the sketch, we're going to make the circular pattern here on the solid model. We really want to create a pattern at this point. We don't have a pattern yet. And we're going to choose features. And so we pick this hole as a feature. We need to pick an axis. And the green axis is the one that we want that's going to loop around. And let's go back up. Let's say we put in five right now, say OK. And if we kind of orbit around here a little bit, we see, yeah, we got five holes. That looks great. Well, let's go in and look at our circular pattern on our timeline now. Edit the pattern. Let's go up to six and see if that works. Seven, eight. Do we end up with holes or just circles? Hey, look at that. We actually end up with the holes, just what we wanted. So you can see making the circular pattern in the solid model sometimes is going to make it better for you downstream if you need to make changes to certain parts of your circular pattern. Let's go edit the circular pattern one more time and just have four holes in our circular pattern. There we go. And you can see that it's behaved just like we anticipated it would. There are four holes there as we updated that pattern, which is just what we wanted. All right, now what we want to do is we actually want to look at putting some little legs on this solid model, so some things on the bottom of it. And we'll put uh, one in each corner, and we can make those legs uh, out of squares. And let's have those, let's go ahead and put a square sketch. We're going to choose the bottom of this. And now I will take the rectangle and I can take a two point rectangle. That's fine. First corner. I want it to be a one centimeter by one centimeter rectangle. And you notice this time, instead of drawing it in the center and moving it, what I'm going to do is draw it wherever I want. And then I'm going to add dimensions to position it exactly where I want on the model. In this case, I want it to be a centimeter off from the corner. And so I'm going to put in a sketch dimension between this edge and then this far edge of the chamfer. The closest edge of the chamfer is not all the way to the edge of the block. And that says 1.299 something centimeters. I want it to be one centimeter. So there you go. You can see it moved. And now I'm going to do the same from the other side. Create sketch dimension. And I want this to be from that side and the far edge of the chamfer. And I want that to be one centimeter. There we go. So that's a different way to position things than starting at the center and moving it. You can start it wherever and then position it with dimensions. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish this sketch. With that sketch finished, I now want to extrude out the legs. 
so that they reach out a certain distance. So I'm going to take extrude and pick that square I just created. And I want to extrude out a certain distance. Let's make it five centimeters tall, these legs. So now we have one leg. And our next task is to see if we can position one of these in each of our corners. All right, so I'm going to look at it head on. And I'm going to create a pattern, now a rectangular pattern. The object is the extruded leg that I just created right there. <clears throat> and for the directions, I'm going to select this edge. And it's now I need to enter how far in this direction do I need it to go and how many. Well, I only want two. I want to set their spacing to be seven centimeters. And that's the right dimension, so it'll be a centimeter off the other edge. And then also in the other direction, I'm going to do seven centimeters. And I don't want three, I just want two. Say OK. And now we have a leg at each corner. And of course, if we decided to come back to this extrusion and edit the feature and make it only two inches, two centimeters tall instead of five. Now all of them get shorter together, just like all the holes change together because we did the pattern on the solid model. So in summary on this, we've seen how to make circular patterns and rectangular patterns and how it's frequently better to do those on the solid model itself instead of on the sketch, as that'll help you replicate any changes you have if you need to make changes later. Looked at making fillets and chamfers on models, which should be done in the sketch or in the solid model, and how you can use the parameters to make them all equal to each other. And finally, we looked at how to position the circles we started positioned at the center and then moved it, whereas the squares we positioned just randomly somewhere, and then we used dimensions to locate it exactly where we wanted.